Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 25. In this tutorial we're going to add some UI to our intro scene right here and we're also going to make our main menu link to this scene when we click on the new game and we're going to add in some sound effects and a little bit of menu music as well. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else I upload on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, adding some UI into this scene is pretty simple and we've already done most of the work before. Anyway, we know how to add um, subtitles and we know how to add in different bits of UI. I figured although we're going to have subtitles, there's a little bit of context I want to add to this scene in the terms of UI first. Like, let's say, a place that we can have and a date, because obviously we kind of want it to fade in. It says, you know, whatever date we've got, the place we're at, and then we can start telling that story. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to text. We're going to have the text uh, top left and let's double click to get it into focus. And let's move it into position using our rec tool right there. Let's bring it up to probably about there. And let's think of a place that we can actually have this set. So it's kind of the whole thing is going to be kind of fictional. So I'm going to be a little bit vain and cheat a little bit and have this as Sagev Woods. And obviously Sagev backwards is Vegas. So this is the place. So I'm going to have it white. And let's have the font size a little bit bigger. So let's have um, maybe 30. Yep, that should do. Uh, so let's right click and rename this to say place display. And I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate that. And I'm going to have this say date display. And essentially what you can do with this is you could use the same animation that we're going to create. So I want to have fade in animation, but it's also going to be controlled via um, a script when we get around to sequencing later on. Um, for a bit of context as well, I'm going to add in a line between here. So in the first one, place display, I'm going to go to UI and have a raw image. I'm going to, oops, didn't mean to do that. So let's take this raw image, bring it to round about there, uncouple it from place display, shrink it, and then drag it across. So basically all I've done with this is create, uh, think of it as like a, a divider. So now let's change the date display to a date. Let's have um, October 29th, I guess, 2008, maybe. So it's set in the past. Uh, or, or at least this section's story set in the past. You know, it's, it's your game. You design it however you want. Uh, and let's just have this as divider image. So now I'm going to take all three of those and change the color, the alpha, to zero. So zero and zero and zero. And now I'm going to take the animation on here, so place display, <coughs> excuse me, into animations. And let's click animation. Let's click on, there we go, place display. We'll have this as fade text anim. So I'm going to have this, uh, let's say, fade in over two seconds. So the first keyframe we want to reset as zero on the alpha, so let's set that as zero. And then after 120 frames, we set the alpha as 255. And then stop. So let's do the same again with date display. You could theoretically use the same animation, just drag and drop over. I mean, th there's multiple different ways that you can do um, uh, you know various different things you can use the same animation you can just create the same one again you know ideally it's probably best to 
uh, reuse animations because that way you're reusing assets rather than creating new ones but it, it generally doesn't matter because we're still going to go along the same principle anyway and we'll stop that and we'll take the divider image and we'll do the same as well so we'll have this divide anim uh, I am kind of skipping through all of this quite quickly because we know how to do animation we've worked with it before so it's not too difficult. You just got to remember to set those keyframes. That's the main thing, I think. Uh, so two, five, five. And we'll stop that. So obviously I want to have all these animations only play for once for now. Uh, so divide on him and uh, fade text on him. And obviously if you've done the same as me, created two animations, then you would do the same. So now if we press play, we should see these fade in. There we go. So obviously, like I say, this is going to be some UI that we'll control via sequencing. But I think the most important thing, and I've, I've not really touched upon this yet, is linking these scenes together and getting the main menu working. And I wish that I've done it a little bit sooner than what uh, we're at now. So that's what I want to get on with. We've created that UI. So we've created ourselves the beginning of a story. And that's where we're going to go from there. So let's save that scene. And let's head to our main menu. In fact, let me just double check something first. File, build settings, and um, let's click on add open scenes because I've forgotten we need to add it to the scenes in the build. So intro scene is number four. Keep that in mind. We'll need that. Uh, so let's go to our main menu. And let's actually get at least just this new game working for now. So let's go to our scripts folder menus folder and then right click create and c sharp and we'll have this named as main menu function and let's open that up in visual studio so like i said the idea of what we're going to do here is just basically get the initial button working so clicking new game will take us to our intro sequence that's the main thing that we need to get done here but i want to add in a little bit of effect to this as well rather than just click it and we go straight to it so what we need to do is we need to get rid of void start and void update and let's actually start we're going down so we've got a bit of space to work with and let's have public void new game button open close bracket open curly bracket now obviously because we are changing scenes we need to use using unity engine dot scene management and then in our method here scene manager dot load scene four semicolon and save so this is the basics of it however i don't want to just click it and go to the game I want more to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in two assets right here. So if we go to uh, the effects folder first off, and I'm going to drag and drop this button hit, which you can get on the website, head over there, downloads and assets and the survival horror to tutorial number 25, and it's free to download. And the music, which is going to be our menu music, I'm going to bring that in as well into here. And let's just add this menu music first off. So let's go to our main camera and let's just drag and drop the main menu music over here. So it's a component. Uh, I want play on awake, loop, but I'm also going to decrease the volume quite a lot because I think it's quite loud. So I'm going to have it 0.15 for now, but I'm going to have the pitch quite low as well. So 0.4 maybe. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is on main camera, hold, I'm going to, sorry, and there's a hold control press D. We don't want to duplicate the camera. That'd be silly. Uh, right click and create empty. And on here, we're going to have this as button click. And that button click is basically just like a jingle that will play when we've pressed a button. So let's drag and drop that button hit onto button click right there. Untick by an awake. And once again, I'm going to reduce the volume because I think it is quite loud. So I'm going to have that as 0.2 just for now and save my scene. So you realize what's happened here. We're going to need to now declare a variable for when we click on that button, but there's more to it. I want to create a fade out screen as well. So fading out over, let's say three seconds. So to do that, we do pretty much the inverse of our fade in screen. So game object, 
uh, UI and raw image. Let's rename this to fade out. And I'm going to set it to completely black. And um, let's set the anchor to stretch across the entire scene, zero everything out, and then set the alpha as zero. Perfect. So although it's covering the entire scene, we won't be able to click these buttons right here, but all we need to do is basically turn it off and only turn it on when we need to activate it. But we need to create that animation first. So let's go to animation and create fade out anim. I'm going to call this three because it's over three seconds. So then let's press record and let's set the alpha to zero and then 180 frames because that's three seconds and at 180th frame alpha is 255. So then let's press the record button to stop. Let's go to the fade out. Uh, if I can find it, fade out anim untick loop because we only want it to play the once. Next I'm going to turn it off because we don't need it on. Now the last thing I'm going to do, although this isn't technically a loading screen, it might be wise to actually put a little uh, text at the bottom that says loading just so as it doesn't give the impression of the game has frozen or anything like that because sometimes you'll come across games where it's actually kind of loading but it's just blank and I kind of don't like that. So we'll just for now, make things a little easier. Go to UI, go to text. I'm going to anchor it down the bottom uh, right. And I'm going to have the text size 32. Uh, in fact, I'll probably bold it as well. Maybe bold italic, because why not? Uh, have it white. And I'll just make it say loading. Just nice and simple. And let's bring this down to the bottom to about there. And I'm going to turn it off. Uh, let's rename. So right click, rename. And let's have this as loading text. And now let's create those two variables in our script. So public game object uh, fade out semicolon. And then public game object load text semicolon. Now because we're going to be dealing with time we need to create a coroutine. So I enumerator and let's call this um, new game start open close bracket open curly bracket and what we'll do is have fade out dot set active true semicolon and let's actually add in another variable which is going to be our button click. So public audio source button click semicolon. So that means that as soon as we've initiated the fade out, let's have button click dot play open close bracket and semicolon. <clears throat> After that, let's yield return new wait for seconds because we're going to wait for three seconds before we actually display loading. So let's have three. And as soon as we've done that, let's have uh, the load text. I can't think of what it's called. It's right in front of me. Load text dot set active true semicolon and then load scene down here. So now we can get rid of this line of code here and just have start coroutine new game start. Oh, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon and save. So you may be wondering at this point, well, what's the point of having the load text on the scene if we just instantly jump to another scene? Well, it takes time to load another scene in, obviously. And the last thing you're going to see on our screen is a black screen with the loading. So it gives the impression that it's kind of like a loading screen, although it isn't, but it's something we may have to do later on if something is quite large and we need to load it. But this is just like a temporary way of just at least displaying something that says loading. So let's head back to Unity. And we're going to need to add in a new game object so we can place this script on it. So game object, create empty. We'll have menu control. 
so everything within the menu will be controlled from this object. So now drag and drop the main menu function onto there. Fade out, let's set there. Load text, let's set here. And button click, let's set there. And now let's save our scene and test this out. Press play. There we go. So we can still hover over the buttons. So if we click new game now, we should have that jingle and it should start fading out. But it doesn't. Why doesn't it? Because I hadn't set the down button. <laughs> I tell you what, guys, that this must be the biggest, silliest thing I ever do. I, I do it all the time and I realize, Jimmy, you idiot. Uh, so, yeah, we know how to realistically set buttons up. So the idea of a button is you can click on the plus down here to add the idea of it being clicked. And in this little box, it's just a case of dragging that menu control object. Then you click on no function and click on the script that we've got right there. So main menu function, and then click on the name of the um, method that we've created. In this case, it's new game button. Kind of embarrassing that when you do all that work and realize, oh, you didn't do the last step. Silly Jimmy. So then press play. Now we should be able to see all this in action. There we go. So that all works just fine now. So let's just try that out once again. Perfect. So you can see the sequence of events coming together now. And what I want to do in the next tutorial is I'm going to add in some voice acting. Uh, so I'm going to quickly write something together, you know, that kind of, um, well, something relevant to the game because it's kind of creepy, isn't it? So we're going to have some subtitles. We're going to have the voice acting. Um, we'll have a fade out in the intro scene as well and link that to the main game as well. So we're going to do the whole sequencing now. Uh, probably fix a couple of little bugs as well. Uh, maybe write a little bit more of the main menu as well. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.